Um, so we're going to do this little step up because we're going to need this skill to do the word problem ones. Um, so it says here, what we're going to do is figure out the H plus or OH minus concentration of these acids or bases. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to make this assumption for these guys. For our purposes, just to practice this idea, we're going to pretend that all the acids and bases that I give you in these problems are strong. And by strong, you might remember we talked about that word the other day when we were taking some notes. Strong ion, uh, acids or bases break up into their ions. So when they say completely dissociates, that's a fancy way of saying they break up into their ions. Now, that's not really 100% true. Not some of, the, some of these examples up here aren't strong acids or bases. But I'm not going to try and trick you. With any. You can just make the assumption that every single one I give you is strong. When you get into AP chemistry, that's when they're going to start to throw some weak acids and bases at you. But for right now, we're just going to focus on strong ones only. Okay? You can assume they're all breaking up. So if you have this where it tells you the you had hydrochloric acid that was 3 moles per liter, and we wanted the H plus concentration, not the HCl concentration, HCl would break up into H plus and Cl minus, right? So for every HCl, we'd get one hydrogen ion. So I'm going to say for every one moles of HCl, we'd get one moles worth of H plus out of that. Well, the moles of HCl would cancel out. And we could get our molarity of just the hydrogen ion only would still be 3. But if you had the same molarity sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, when it breaks up into its ions, we'd get H+, plus, another H+, plus, and a sulfate. So if we had 3 moles per liter of that guy, for every one mole of H2SO4, we're going to get two moles worth of H plus ions out of that, right? So the molarity of the hydrogen ion isn't three, it's six. Now the rest of these, I bet you could do in your head, right? You don't need to do a whole stoic problem to figure them out. But if you have three molar phosphoric acid, what's the molarity of your hydrogen going to be? Nine, right? Because we have three H's per molecule, so we'd have to triple that molarity. How about the one molar HF? What would that be? One, right? Yeah, you're, it's okay. You got it. You know what you're talking about, right? It would be one. If you had one molar H2CRO4, that would be two, right? There's two H's per. How about our KOH, right? One OH per KOH, so it's going to match. Twelve. Eighteen. Right? Ooh, that'd be scary. Stay away from 18 molar. Yikes. 2 molar, 4 molar. Good. Okay, we're going to use that concept when we start to do some scarier word type problems in the next page here. <coughs> that you can't just look at the molarity of the acid or the base, but you have to take into consideration how many H's or how many OH's there are per molecule when you're figuring out the molarity of the ion. Okay. All right. So what might one of these word problem type ones look like? Um, so it wants to know what's the pH of a 0 0.0136 molar solution of KOH, and what's the H plus? So it looks a little bit scarier than what we did yesterday in the chart. But it's really the same thing. It just looks a little bit different. If I worked this out, we have, if it's 0 0.0136 molar KOH, 
first thing I want to do is figure out the molarities of the ions, not just of the chemical, but of the ions. So if you had one mole of KOH, and that's going to break up, you would have one mole's worth of OH minus in that KOH, right? So the molarity of your OH is the same number. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like the chart yesterday where it just told you here's the OH minus. Well, it wants us to find the pH, not the pOH. It says, don't just stop at the pOH, but what would the pH be? Well, to get to my pH, there's a bunch of different ways of solving this problem. You guys have learned numerous mathematical equations that links all four of those variables together. Lots of different ways you can tackle it. I'm going to show you one way, but there's many ways you could do it. Um, if I took the negative log of that number, that would get me the pOH, right? Because I'm taking the negative log of the OH. And it said don't stop at the pOH, it wants the pH. But since I'm working with a base, sometimes it's just more convenient to find the OH and then you can use that OH to solve for the H. So if I do the negative log of that 0 0.0136, I'm going to keep a whole bunch of decimal places for right now. Um, but like I said, you can, you can round kind of whatever you really want to <laughs> for this chapter. You get a little break. Well, if that's the pOH, how am I going to find the pH? 14 minus that, right? Since they always have to add up to 14, if I do 14 minus the 1.86646, that's going to tell us our pH. About 12.134-ish, right? Somewhere in that range. There's our pH. A good one second check you could do for yourself is to say, does that pH make sense for the chemical that I'm given? So we were given a base, right? K-O-H, that's a base. And it has a pH above 7, that's good. If you saw that your K-O-H had a pH of 1, you should go, whoa, wait a second, I screwed something up. That would be an acid if it had a pH that low. It takes one second because it's real easy to flip your H's and O-H's around. So just make sure you didn't goof them up in your head. Well, there's the pH. What about the other part, the H plus? Well, that pH, that's the power of our hydrogen. So if I do 1 times 10 to the negative, 12.134, that'll give us our H+. Plus. Okay. They're all kind of linked together. So when you do that, you should be getting somewhere in the range of about 7.35 times 10 to the negative 13. Something like that. 